everybody, Michelle here, and I'm back again with yet another tutorial. And this tutorial is going to be quick and fun, and I think you're going to like it. I was inspired the other day. I was looking, I think it was on Pinterest, and I saw this really cool box called a napkin fold box. And it was done like really popular like three or four years ago and I apparently missed it because I've never seen anything quite like it before. I've I've known about napkin fold like cards and stuff and they're they're kind of complicated and everything. Um I thought that I could take that idea and adapt it. So what I'm going to do today is share with you an adaptation of that and what I'm gonna do is I guess I'm gonna call it I'm not really sure. I think maybe a squash fold gift box. I'm not really sure. I'm going to use my explosion board that I have and this is available at Country Craft Creations, countrycraftcreations.com this thing, I've used this a lot, and if you followed my tutorials, you know that um, I love the explosion board, and I love making explosion boxes and trying to figure out other things to do with it. So this one is going to use this board uh, to make this box, and it's a really cool, simple idea, and I think it's going to be fun. Now, I'm going to be using Christmas cheer. Christmas is coming. We need some gift boxes. So this would be a really cute gift box with a super huge wow factor. So um, we're going to use this. Um, let's get started. It doesn't take a whole lot of paper to make this project. It takes three pieces of cardstock, and that's like it. So you'll have a lid, you'll have your base box, and then you're going to have kind of this explosion piece, squash bookie piece um, that's going to be really fun to do. So I've got all my papers are ready to go. And we're just gonna go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is make the box. So again, with your explosion board, this is available at Country Craft Creations at countrycraftcreations.com. We're gonna put it in your scoreboard here. And you're going to score on the medium box line, all four sides. So we'll do that. I just saw this and I totally had to make this. I had to figure it out, how I could adapt it, how I could make it um, a little easier because the napkin fold, again, is super complicated. I, at least I think it is. Um, I've seen it, seen that particular fold before. Um, yeah, I've never seen that box before, though. And um, when I started researching it, after I saw it, I was just like, wow, it's been around for a while and a lot of people have made it. I have no idea where it originated from. Um, but you could look it up on Pinterest, on YouTube, and you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so I didn't want to, you know, like recreate someone else's project, but I made this one kind of my own. It's based off that project. So, um, for whoever made it in the first place, whoever figured it out in the first place, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, now I can I, I adapted it to this. So if you are interested in this paper collection, which it's really cute, um, go to Country Craft Creations at countrycraftcreations.com and get it. And you can also get the explosion board. They have it. It's in stock. They got it. It sold out and now it's back. So hurry because supplies are limited and the way things are going, who the heck knows when um, we'll get it back. So if you want this board, excuse me, I'm going to get that little piece out. Um, you better go get it now. So what I'm doing as I'm chatting away here is I am doing my pinwheel cuts up the score and then I'm creating tabs and then I'm just cutting up straight on the side of the box and then creating the tab turn and do it again. So we're going to do that on all four sides. Then we're going to go ahead and fold and burnish all of our score lines and then what we're going to do is we're going to just cover a couple things because the way this box is constructed we kind of can't put pattern paper on a lot of it until we get some of the pieces on it already okay so fold and burnish all of your scores here all right now let's see let's see what can nope we're gonna do it the way we need to do it okay so 
<laughs> this is going to be the pattern paper for the outside of my box, and this is going to be the pattern paper for the inside of the box. Now, right now, we can only cover the bottom outside. Now, I did make a prototype, and I used a ribbon that I did attach to the bottom of the box that would come up, and you could tie it over the lid of the box. You definitely don't need to, but it is an option if you want to, um, you know, do that. Uh, the lid is, is fairly tight once you get it on the box, so you really don't need to do that. But if you wanted a decorative accessory, um, I did do that. But this one, we're not going to do that. We're going to just decorate the top of the box with some poinsettia flowers that I have. So um, the box itself is going to be 6 by 6 by 3 inches deep. So it's a goodly sized box. And this piece of paper was 12 by 12. I don't even know if I said that. I just got so excited about making this box. So this paper is 12 by 12. You put it in the scoreboard and you score on all four sides at the medium score line. Okay. So we're, this is the outside of the box. We've got that covered. Now we're going to do the inside of the box. Um, just the bottom only because we're going to have to build the box first in order to cover everything else and you will see why in a little bit okay so I love this paper and with the gifts it was just absolutely um, beautiful all right so this part this is all we can do right now with this box so we're gonna just take these papers and we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna work on the next piece so Let's work on the lid. So again, I've cut my pattern papers. It didn't take a lot of pattern paper either to make this. So one sheet for the lid, um, two sheets for the box, and then I used kind of some scraps and stuff for the, the pop-out piece that we're gonna do. So the lid, the measurement for this is eight and three eighths. Let me double check just to make sure because I do not want to steer you wrong here. So eight and three eighths by eight and three eighths. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. And put it in your scoreboard, and there's a lid line on the scoreboard, and you're just going to score down that line on all four sides. All right. Um, this is an inch and an eighth wide for the sides of the lid here. So you're only going to need one inch strips to cover the sides. So it's really um, cool because you can use pieces. And part of the pieces that I used were the strips cut from the cut apart sheet in this paper collection. So it worked out really cool. Um, I again going to do the very same type of pinwheel cuts to make the tabs that will create the sides of this lid. So I'm just cutting straight up that score and taking out my wedges for my tabs. Okay. Um, the other thing that I'm doing, um, I'm using artisan cardstock in red and it matches this collection beautifully. Also the, um, you know, obviously white would work and then the, um, green will work as well. Um, very pretty colors and very festive too. So I thought this was a cute, gift box. When I made the prototype, I got super excited. My poor husband was trying to watch football and I kept interrupting me going, interrupting him, I, I should say, going, look at this, look at this, you gotta check this out. So, pretty cool. So, not my idea, but I did adapt it, so. All right, so, oh, you know, I didn't want to do that. I kept talking. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm going to undo that. We're going to make life easy on ourselves first. I got so excited. I just kind of kept talking. So um, don't put your sides on yet. Okay. Let's cover some stuff with pattern paper and make life a little easier on ourselves for the lid. So for the lid, you can cover the inside top before you make the sides. So that's a good idea to do. Sometimes I just got to quit talking and do 
pay attention. All right, so inside of the lid. So I'm gonna flip it over and we're gonna cover all of the outsides on this so we can do that. So this image I'm gonna have on the top of the box and then when you lift the box up, when you open it, that's gonna be the inside image. I just love this paper. It's really hard to figure out which one I wanted to use just because it was so beautiful. Okay. So, got that. And then this is the piece that I was talking about. So these were 12 inch strips off the cut apart sheet. And I just um, cut those off. They were one inch and I cut them at six um, because the lid, when it's all finished, the dimensions will be six and an eighth. So you only need six inches wide and, or six inches long, one inch wide strips to cover the sides. So that worked out pretty good. Okay, and I like the Christmas lights. I just thought that was super pretty. So, again, the lid was, the pa base paper was 8 and 3 eighths by 8 and 3 eighths, and then you score it on the lid line. The pattern paper to cover the inside is 6 by 6. And then these strips here are 1 inch by 6 inches. So I'm just going to put all four of those on, and then, you guys, we can build the box. Be gads. Sometimes I swear I should write myself my own directions out and have flashcards or something. Good gravy. I just get so excited, and then I get talking. All right. So this is going to be really cute. All right. So the lid is almost done here. Um... Got the outside with our pattern papers on. All right, and all of our little lights are in the right direction. I did ink the papers as well. Okay, so now we can build the lid and then we'll put the pattern papers on the inside of the sides, okay? So, lesson is cover the inside top part with the pattern paper, cover the entire outside with pattern paper on your lid, and then put your lid together, and then do the inside. Whoops. And make sure that you actually let the glue set. What I should do is use little clippies. I have a bazillion of them. Make sure you put your little tab on the inside when you do this, otherwise it'll be a little bit harder to get the tabs in there so you can glue it shut. All right, and then let's do this last one. Like so. Okay. All right, so my papers here for the inside. Get those going. Um, I Did I mention I inked them? I did ink them with some distressed ink. So just go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna finish this and I will be right back. Okay, so now we're going to work on the really cool kind of explosion part of this box. So I have my pattern papers all ready to go and I have four six by six pieces of cardstock and I'm gonna stick them in my scoreboard and I'm gonna score on the medium, turn it, score on the medium, and then I'm gonna turn it over. So I'm gonna flip it completely around so my scores go in the proper direction and I'm gonna score down the diagonal with this scoreboard and then I'm gonna turn it and score at the diagonal again. Now we're making like a mini squash book. Okay, um, and if you've made these before, um, they're really fun to do. Um, so I have my scores 
in the pro appropriate direction. So you want the diagonal score to be opposite of the, um, you know, the straight scores, I guess you could say. So I'm just going to fold those and then I'm going to turn it over and then do my diagonal. And this is gonna help it fold up. Just make sure all your corners are straight and do your burnishing, okay? So you'll end up with something like this and then you squash it down and then that makes a squash, okay? So we're not quite done yet though because we're going to have to alter this just a little bit to make the box. So I'm gonna try and burnish it as good as I can. Okay, and then we're gonna open it up and on one of the squares, and it doesn't really matter which one, just one that does not have a diagonal score in it, we're gonna take our scissors and we're just gonna eyeball this. We're gonna cut at like half an inch away from the score and just cut out like a little square. Okay, so we're just gonna cut that part out and you can save that for something else. We don't need it. Then you're gonna go from the diagonal of that cut right to the diagonal of the inside and you're going to make a cut there, okay? I almost said make an incision. Ha <laughs> ha, can you tell I'm a, I work in the operating room? Okay, so <laughs> we've made our incision. All right, so now we have a piece that looks like this. So we have our square diagonals and we have our tabs, okay? These are what's going to attach to our box. So we're gonna fold it up, okay? And then I'm gonna put it so that, that my tabs, I'm gonna leave those open so you can see the orientation, okay? So I've made four of these and we're going to orient them so the tabs are over here. These are gonna go in all four corners of our book. Now it's gonna be easier to actually, or four corners of our box. It's gonna be easier to put our pattern paper on now before we add it to the box. So just make sure when you lay this down, now this is important if you're using paper with direction, okay? And I am, so on the top anyway, I really want this to be <clears throat> accurate. So um, I have my tabs on the outsides and I got my insides here and then I've got my pattern paper. So I decided to take Mr. Santa Claus here and we are going to put him on all four corners. Now these squares will end up being three by three. So I cut these at two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And we're just going to add our papers to the appropriate square. So when these are all folded up and flat, you're going to actually see the picture of Santa Claus together. Okay. Okay. So making sure, now if you're not using like a, a photo kind of thing on this it, and it doesn't really matter, you can go ahead, you could decorate it any way you want. Um, I just wanted to have Santa Claus kind of right there. So he's got his list, checking it. The ladies on the front were sending their mail to him, so he's checking to see if they made it. All right, so so now I've got <clears throat> all of this done. All right, just like that. So when you squash all these down, your picture is basically complete, okay? All right, so then what we're gonna do, let's open it up this way so now that the tabs are on the inside and then we're going to go ahead and cover our insides with our pattern paper okay so make sure that the the tabs are now kind of on the inside okay in all four corners and this will keep your your orientation so that you can do your pattern paper now i have all my little pieces cut so my plan is i'm going to do this and that, oops, actually, I'm gonna keep my lines going in the direction that I want them to go. All right, so my little green lines there. Okay, so I've started laying out my squares and, and my triangles that I've already cut out. Um, these are all cut at two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths, and then for the diagonals, I just cut them simply in half, 
and it works out pretty darn good. Now, if you don't have a direction of your um, paper that you really have to pay attention to, like these are totally directional with the ornaments going up and down, uh, you do not have to worry about it, but if you do have that, you do have to worry about it. So just you know, be mindful when you are cutting your papers that you have them in the correct orientation. So I'm just going to, this is my plan. This is how I'm going to lay it out. So um, I'm going to go ahead now and glue all these down and then I will be right back and these will all be done. So the pieces that explode are done. And what we're gonna do now is we're going to set these aside and grab the box again. So I probably could have just built the box and done the side or the insides before, but we're gonna do that now. And we're just going to add glue to our tabs and then create our box side. Okay, so just bring those up, match the edges and we'll glue those down. Then let's keep going around. And match our box sides. bring this one in so that it's easier for me when I get to that side. So this is a goodly sized gift box. This will work great for giving gifts. Bring that in and it'll be really cute and it has that wow factor too. Okay and then one more tab. All right, so then go ahead and you can put your pattern paper on the inside. So the inside is using this really pretty uh, present paper that I thought was super pretty. All right. So there, the sides are three by six for the box. So I'm cutting the, I cut them at two and seven eighths by five and seven eighths for the pattern papers. So obviously you'll need four inside and four outside, but we're just gonna cover the inside right now because we need to add our pieces to this and then we're done. So this is a super quick project, I think. And with all the little squares and triangles and stuff, you could use scraps from projects and totally do this. Um, I used a couple full sheets of paper and then some scraps. So it just depends. But the cool part is it only takes three pieces of cardstock. So I think that's kind of cool. All right. Okay, so last one on the inside, and then we're going to put the explosion pieces, the squash pieces, on the box and finish it, and then we're done. So, all right, this is easy. All right, so here's our box. So super cute. And then whatever orientation, if you have an orientation to your paper, and it looks like that's right where I want it to be, so this will be, you know, the... Um, orientation that I want. And then what we're going to do is fold up your box or fold, fold up your box, fold up your squash pieces. For, so your tabs are here. We're going to add glue to our tabs and then we're going to glue this down. So just make sure in all of the, you know, setting aside, excuse me, that we have everything in the proper orientation because we want, we don't want our squares 
in the wrong spot, right? So we have that and that, that looks pretty good. So then this guy will go, okay, like that, right? Okay, so let's start with Santa's head. So we're gonna fold it up and we're gonna take our tabs. We're gonna put some glue on our tabs. And these glue right to the outside of the box. So I'm just going to line those up and stick them right to the sides of the box. And it's a little tricky but it can be done and you can turn it to the side. Just make sure that the fold goes right at the top. And on the side, okay? So the corners match, all right? And art glitter glue does set up pretty quickly. So you do have a little time to work. And then this one's gonna go like that and like that. Now, if it's easier, you can do one tab at a time instead of two. So I'll show you how that would look. You just have to make sure that you have it right in the corner, okay? However, it's easier for you to line them up, okay? Okay, you can even open them flat if you need to and then put your tabs here. And we'll do it on the other side. All right. So we have our second piece. Almost sounds like there's a thunderstorm going on outside, but I don't think we were supposed to get any thunderstorms today. Weird. All right. So I'm just going to do two tabs at a time here and I'm going to turn it just so it's easier for me. I'm going to sneak that in there and get those in there. And that's pretty much it. Now once we're done with this, then we can put pattern paper on the outside and be done. Now that's the other thing that you can do is you can kind of squish down like that and get that in there. Okay, and last but not least, last one. Okay. This last one is the trickiest one, I think, because <laughs> you have all the other ones in the way. Just like so. Okay, so we have all of our pieces and then when you squish them, whoops. Yep, that's right. Okay, there we go, no whoops. So once you have all of the explosion pieces on your box, then you fold them in and it'll look like that. Now it will kind of explode because that's what it's supposed to do. The lid, excuse me, the lid will fit right over top of all of this Okay, now we have we still have to put pattern paper on the side, so we, we still need to do that. But the lid will fit on like this, and then when you take it off, then you have Santa there, and then Santa explodes out to create gift box. So I just, <laughs> I just think that's really cool. I love this. I just think it's really neat, and it's fun, and it's unexpected, and um, I, you know, had never seen it before. So I really like it so let's go ahead put the pattern paper on the outside and then we are all done except for decorating the lid um but this is my I, I don't know I don't even know what to call it I just don't know what to call it um I guess I'll call it I think officially we'll call it the squash fold 
exploding gift box. I like that. Squash fold exploding gift box. I like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's what we're going to call it. I had to talk it out, I guess. All right. Doesn't take much paper. Kind of fun to construct. Certainly will be fun when you give it to your recipient. Oops. Got that a little crooked. There we go. And you can go inside and you can burnish it down that way too. I just think this is so much fun. So this is why we have to cover the outsides for, or last, excuse me, because we're covering up the tabs used for the squash project. And get that on straight. Yeah. Okay, last one, and then we're done. Well, I hope you like the tutorial. The artisan cardstock and the Christmas cheer paper and the explosion board, all available at Country Craft Creations at countrycraftcreations.com, as is the art glitter glue. So, yeah, head on over to the store, get your supplies, and you can make a couple of these boxes. All right, so, explosion box is done. Put the lid on. And there you go. So, it looks like an average gift box, <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> cracking myself up so there you go and then you have this really cool just awesome little box so this is my squash fold explosion gift box and I'm using Christmas cheer I hope you like the tutorial I will have pictures of how I decorated it after um in a minute because I'm going to decorate it off camera and then I will take pictures. So I hope you like it and I hope you try it. And if you do, let me know. And I will be back with more tutorials really soon. So have a good day. Stay crafty and I will see you later. Bye-bye.